Uh, I've said before, I think, that in this session of the Scottish Parliament with a minority government, all political parties will need a positive agenda if we want to exercise influence in the Parliament. Simply laying implacable demands or seeking to block action, I don't think, will work. Greens will make positive proposals, and I think our track record in the previous session of minority government demonstrates that this approach can get results. The Scottish National Party may come to feel naturally entitled to propose its programme, but without a majority, it will need to convince, it will need to compromise, and it will need to be willing to give ground. I welcome some early signals that that approach is going to be taken today, and in particular, the commitment to increase the carer's allowance and to look at the green policy proposal of an additional young carer's allowance. That's very welcome. And I also welcome the, the wider comment the First Minister made about social security. The chance, she said, to develop a social security system which respects the dignity of individuals as human beings. We must take every opportunity that we can in this Parliament to protect people from the UK government's damaging and divisive approach to the welfare system. And I very much welcome that the First Minister seems minded in that direction. The green approach of being constructive and challenging will continue, and there are certainly areas of agreement beyond that, not only on the provision for carers, but other aspects of the approach to supporting children. I love the baby box idea. I wish we'd put that in our manifesto, I have to be honest. I would like to see an assurance from the First Minister that that won't involve any hint of corporate sponsorship. I'm, I'm very pleased to see that the First Minister is nodding uh, in immediate response to that. Also, the, the important need to support uh, maternity and early years allowances. Uh, that's another area. Uh, and top up to child benefit, I hope, is another area where we'll see some cross-party consensus, as well as on childcare. And I'm glad that there's recognition of the need for flexibility and quality of childcare, not just numbers of hours. On participatory budgeting, I'm very glad that the First Minister likes the idea of participatory budgeting. Green councillors have been champions of that uh, at local level. But the idea of a nationally determined approach being imposed on all local councils does jar somewhat with the idea of participation. Are local elected councillors to be the only people not to be allowed their own say about local spending levels? Participatory budgeting is a good thing and we'll continue to back it, but it should be in the context of a more economically empowered local democracy where councils can make meaningful choices instead of just jumping through hoops set by national government. That's why we'll continue to make the case for the scrapping of the council tax and its replacement in this session of parliament with a modern alternative and for more widely renewing local democracy in Scotland. There are other aspects of the statement which should get broad support consensus between the parties. Commitment to the rollout of broadband, increasing apprenticeships and overcoming gender inequality. And the Warm Homes Bill. Who isn't proposing a Warm Homes Bill this year? Only a mere 13 years after Robin Harper first proposed one, I'm glad that it will finally happen. But it is going to have to come with the financial commitment to make it a reality. And on educational attainment, I think all parties have recognised that more can be achieved. But the case for standardised testing, I don't think, has been fully made. And we'll continue to question that choice of priorities. We'll welcome the opportunity to engage actively with the government's educational agenda. But we do remain concerned that the, uh, that the need to ensure that education remains democratically accountable through our local authorities is something which needs to be defended. And the commitment to maintaining free higher education with no front door or back door fees, that's something the Greens welcome wholeheartedly. But the notion that that policy comes as a, at a cost to further education has persisted for too long. Both are vital to people, to communities, and to the country as a whole. I deprecate the presentation of that dichotomy by Ruth Davison, but very clearly, spending commitments are needed from the Scottish Government if we're going to protect both FE and HE. 
And finally, on making the case for independence, uh, one which is clearly going to need a stronger and more pluralistic case than we've seen in 2014, Greens look forward to continuing to play a constructive role. There will be areas of clear disagreement which require discussion uh, between all political parties. The Scottish Government's proposal to halve and then scrap air passenger duty, for example, there is clear parliamentary opposition to that proposal. But I come back to this notion that parties will be successful by proposing constructive alternatives. I'm convinced that an alternative to the SNP's policy here, one which meets an environmental test through reducing aviation emissions and a social justice test by not placing the burden only on those who fly once a year for an annual holiday, such an alternative can be developed. And we'll seek the government's agreement on that point of principle. For example, the, the idea of a frequent flyer levy is one that deserves examination. The opposition of some political parties to child protection legislation which Parliament passed in the last session has, in my view, been disgraceful. And the misrepresentation of those policies as though they undermine human rights or the rights of families, I think, is disgraceful. <laughs> but I suspect there is support for proper, robust post-legislative scrutiny to ensure that the implementation can take place as intended. And I hope that's something where there will be agreement between opposition and government parties. And further, there will be areas where additional pressure is needed. Very clearly on the climate change targets, over the last few years, we've seen government uh, use statistical anomalies to uh, absolve themselves of responsibility for failing to meet the climate change targets. We're likely to see a further statistical anomaly make it easier for them to reach this year's climate change target given changes to the European emissions trading scheme. I hope that they won't uh, take a, a different approach to the role that statistical anomalies play this year than last year simply because it gives them a more convenient response. But clearly there is a need for bolder action and I'm glad the First Minister acknowledged there is a need for bolder action if we're going to go further and meet those climate change targets for the longer term. Finally, there must be a case made for a shift toward a progressive, sustainable transport policy, something which has been lacking for far too long. As for the wider green case on a transition away from an economy desperately vulnerable to the oil and gas sector, yet more job losses announced today, do we really want Scotland to remain so vulnerable to a finite industry? Do we really want Scotland to remain vulnerable and overexposed to an industry which is doing so much damage to our world? One which clearly cannot last. How long should we remain so vulnerable? Five years? Ten years? Twenty? The investment in an alternative is urgent and there is much that we agree with in the First Minister's statement about that need for innovation. I would say that both in relation to the private sector, the public sector and the community sector. Innovation not only in new industries but also in new uh, business models such as greater reliance on employee ownership, on social enterprise and on mutuals. But this innovation, this building of a new sustainable economy has to be seen as an alternative to simply pretending that business as usual in fossil fuels can continue. And finally, presiding officer, Greens will continue to challenge the disconnect that exists between mindless measurements of economic growth and the notion of well-being, distribution and a healthy economy. Economies can grow while seeing social justice erode or be built up. Economies can grow while achieving environmental sustainability or continuing to deplete their finite natural resources. Growth is not the objective that this government should continue to commit to, but the health and well-being of our economy and the sustainability of our environment. Greens will continue to make that case.